So as you can see, the aircraft came shooting through the fence. As terrifying as this may look, imagine the half hour just before it. The pilot in flight declaring a loss of hydraulics, which control landing gear, wing flaps and some brakes. He likely knew he'd barely be able to slow the plane. And on landing, it hurtled down the runway and right off of it, brakes burning under the pressure, stopping just before a sharp ditch. If we had 10 more feet, we would be down in the cliff, down in the ditch. So it's a miracle over miracles. Invor Badesi was in one of the first seats. That, that's where the panic starts coming in. Everybody got, everybody got woken up at that time and they start cursing, they start praying. It was just that one, when I start chaos, start going crazy. Everybody just going crazy, screaming. The plane never made it near Canada, home to most of the 120 passengers. It was delayed on departure, apparently over a door issue. Investigators will now look at recent maintenance and examine the runway, which was itself recently extended after a similar accident. So at, at least uh, one bright uh, spot out of very gloomy and serious situation is that they, uh, we were able to, they were able to utilize the runway. The runway, the, the extended runway, I would like to make it very clear, was not opened. We, it, it, even though it was completed, it, it was not open for um, airline traffic. But because it's there, they were able to use it. Authorities report airport crews laid out a spike belt rumble strip to slow the plane as it approached the runway's end. The sound of impact, passengers told Guyanese TV, created panic. The next thing you know, the, oh, the plane, yeah, the plane going to hear shh, and the girls say, leave your baggage and everybody run, they open the, the door. The plane crashed into the, uh, their defense, uh, uh, the wire fence. Uh, and then they, they announced something meaning to evacuate, to evacuate immediately. And then I got up, and then he hit something else and I fell down. Now, the search for answers. The U.S. is sending an investigator to assist the small Caribbean nation determine why this happened. David Common, CBC News, Toronto. So, an agonizing experience for passengers, but what about those flying the plane? Barry Wisnowski is a respected air safety expert. He's also a pilot with 18,000 hours of flying experience. We asked him to describe this kind of crisis from a pilot's point of view. So, in the event that uh, you ran through your checklist, you did your calculations for the landing distances, you did your calculations for the air speeds of a degraded uh, uh, aircraft, uh, and you get on the ground, the emergency's not over there. You continue uh, to fly the airplane until the aircraft comes to a complete stop. In the event that you have an overrun, you're still flying the airplane. And again, it's the, the two crew working together in harmony through taking themselves through the checklist to make sure that we minimize uh, loss of life is the priority. You're going to try to minimize damage to the aircraft and save assets. And as if all of that wasn't enough drama for those on board, we're also hearing reports that several passengers were robbed by some of the very people sent to help them. Local police say at least nine firefighters were being questioned after personal items were stolen from the plane. Things like electronic devices, cash and passports. Even the pilot reported missing items. Police say those responsible will be dealt with harshly.